Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Greetings. And today we're going to be making sense of life through City of Angels, Lonely as I. That's good. I don't remember the lyrics. We got City of Angels recommended to us to check out, courtesy of Sisyphus Al 1. Thank you for the recommendation. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it honestly means a lot. Nicolas Cage. I do like me a good Nick Cage film. Is this the first Nick Cage film that we've watched together? It is, yeah. Um, and Meg Ryan. Is this our first Meg Ryan? No, it's no, not. No, it's not. And I'm just no, saying. No, it's not. Who, I'm not yeah. saying it's the yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sharing who was in, who yeah. was starring. Yeah. It's about an angel named yes. Seth, played yes. by Nicolas Cage, who, yeah. fall in, who falls in love with a human whose name is... Meg Ryan. Maggie. Maggie. Played by Meg, <laughs> Meg Ryan. And she's a doctor and they find each other. He sees her because she can't see him in the operating room as she's trying to save this guy uh, who ends up passing away. And obviously he's there to just take him home back mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Seth is yeah. the angel and he, they are like watching over the world yeah. and people and you know, guiding us. But he seems to be very interested in how human beings are. They're both, even though in kind of living in different worlds as it were, they both are questioning or curious about the other world is it? you know almost like the world the other one inhabits for both of them the thing that we see that's similar is they're both dissatisfied with their reality even if they're fulfilled by their jobs you know she's a, a doctor and seemingly quite successful mm -hmm. seth is you know working for god mm -hmm. you know and that's a very i, I suppose that's yeah. what else are you gonna what yeah. else would you want yeah. i guess Based you know? on good benefits yeah, yeah great benefits <laughs> because seth is in love with maggie and she ends up actually seeing him which shouldn't normally happen between angels and humans. Because um, he allows it. He allows it and he decides, he learns from another angel that decides to become human how to do it, how to become human. Yeah. So then he does that so that he can be with Maggie because as angels they can't feel the sensations of contact, well, yeah. any sensations. Any he does the fall so that he can be with Maggie as a human mm -hmm. so they can live together. And then she and dies. she passes away. The other angel that he's friends with asks him, would you have done it knowing now that Maggie would have died soon after you becoming human? He says, I would have done it even just for one, one touch, touch from her hand. hand. It's all worth, it worth it. giving up all his mortality and even being able to listen to beautiful music at sunrise and sunset yeah. that all the angels do. And I, I like I like that part too where uh so the fallen angel that he he finds, they start hanging out and he, you know, messenger explains to Seth how he became human. And uh, you know, at one point Seth's like, Well, do you wanna come back to where the angels would all be at the sunrise? And you know, he's like, Yeah, take me back there, you know, to where we used to used to meet up, you know. So Seth's asking, Do you hear the music we'd hear at sunrise? He's like, No, I don't hear it. But do you feel this? And then he, he goes for a swim in the in the water. It, it makes me think how you're always gonna give up something for, for something, something else. else. And yeah. everyone's situation there'll be doubt drawbacks and positives. With Maggie, why she falls for Seth is he really looks at her. She feels seen. He's so interested in, in how she experiences things. The other doctor, the, the guy that's interested in her, doesn't just really see her in that way of like, I want to know what it is that you experience day to day. Like, let's really get down to exactly. the nitty gritty. What does it feel like for you to eat a pear or to touch yeah. something, you know? And, and so that, that makes her feel very connected to Seth. Exactly. And she sees this man who kind of validates her sense of there's much more to how I'm living. Yeah. It facilitates taste them coming together yeah. right for Seth I felt like it was love at first sight she locks eyes with this yeah. with him in the operation room as yeah. though she could see him yeah. and it kind of he snaps him out of yeah. like oh I'm here to just get this chat yeah. over yeah. here I felt it was more kind of like okay this is a love at first sight thing yeah. Yeah. and so then I was like well you know that's the thing about love as well right yeah. sometimes people who have said well I met this person and I knew the yeah. first time they met yeah. you know without any backstory without yeah. any you know anything yeah. that the person had done they yeah. just had that sense and at the end of the day that's the thing like a lot of us you know the whole saying there's a reason there's a saying that love is blind when you yeah. find love love gives you strong strength and yeah. you know yeah. and all of the the doubts you have yeah. about certain things yeah it validates you. All yeah. of these things that when you were alone yeah. without that love the strength yeah. of love yeah. you wouldn't do on your own yeah. for, because Seth is, yeah. is, is their relationship is preceded yeah. by 
both of them being dissatisfied with yeah. their lives. Which, Seth yeah. already is dissatisfied yeah. dissatisfied with being an angel, yeah. but he's uncertain. Yeah. But then he finds love, and yeah. love was the thing that says, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what allowed him to make the leap, the fall. Yeah. Fall in love, exactly. but also fall. Yeah. Was it the guy who talks about, like, we're perfect for each other? Yeah. Basically yeah. looking at them like a yeah. an equation, right? Yeah. A mathematical equation, like, we fit. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, on paper, it looks like that, right? Like, yeah. people always talk about, we're go he's good on paper, yeah. or we are good for each other on paper. The interesting thing as well is that sometimes you'll see two people who are together and it doesn't make any sense. How, why would this person mm -hmm. be with that person? It makes more sense that Maggie would go for the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really make sense in terms of what the, per the what Maggie feels yeah. in that inexplicable way of the soul. Yeah. You know, whatever that is. That yeah. thing that you can never explain that draws you to another person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I like the part too when uh, Seth talks about, asks her, you know, well, how do you explain the enduring myth of heaven? She's like, well, you know, I, I used to feel like I had a lot more answers to this stuff, but I'm not so sure anymore. And I, I like that just bringing that up because it is a good question. How do you explain it? What? The enduring myth of heaven. Well, I, I used to think that I had it all figured out. But you didn't? No. No. I feel like, I remember when I was young, now maybe I was still growing up and watching fairy tale movies and, and heaven was referred to or they had depictions of it in cartoons. But I feel like I was pretty young when I asked my mom what happens in heaven, like what is, what is it like? And again, for whatever reason, I imagine there was like a lot of food, which makes sense to me, but tennis, which is interesting too. I, I just assumed that like, I could imagine angels, I guess playing tennis, that seemed like something that uh, that, that seemed very viable with, with the wings not getting in the way so much. But I remember thinking it was a lot of like clouds, <laughs> tennis and food, um, buffet tables. Where did that idea come from because I was asking I was I was crying I was very afraid yeah you go through the stuff of not wanting to die the first time you realize you're immortal as a kid and then it freaks you out so I went through that talking with her but I remember thinking I was like you know I grew up not really having any heaven bible or any kind of religious stuff explained or it wasn't a family that we uh, talked about that stuff so why did I just kind of assume it was real or have that thought and then worry about it that was the first thing I went to when it's like oh I'm mortal that's scary but then at least okay I should at least find out where I'm going after this so then the idea like of like what is the enduring myth of heaven is that just like kind of a programmed thing kind of like with language or something is it one of those programmed things in humans that there is that seed of an idea that that comes about when you get to a certain age, or is it that a belief that's just so readily available to people or ingrained? I don't know. Even if there aren't any answers, because there are lots of things that, for example, the question of love, what is love, right? We mm -hmm. still don't know what that yeah. is. There are little things like Messenger, the other fallen angel, he introduces himself as a hedonist. There you go. Good grip. Nathaniel Messenger. Glutton, hedonist, former celestial body, recent addition to the human race. You know, so he's going into operation because he's eating so much and he's, you know, he's starting to get unhealthy, but it's because now he can finally experience eating and, and all these sensual pleasures and everything, which I think is interesting because like Seth isn't necessarily going down the same route. I mean, he's at the end, he's buying a lot of pears, but that's because it reminds him of Maggie, Maggie. and then her Even, ex description yeah. of pears. But that's also the thing is like when you get two separate people, they'll decide differently how best to live life and kind of the ways to get the most pleasure out of life. Messenger is like, well, now that I can experience eating, that's all I want to do. Yeah. And I'm just, I don't care if I die earlier than maybe I could if I took better care of myself. This mm -hmm. is worth it, you know, using my mortality for just experiencing all those sensual pleasures in that way. Other people don't feel like it's necessarily worth it, but that's where you get everyone, where everyone has a different kind of philosophy on life on how to properly, what's best to use your time and what, what best activities or how much uh, can you squeeze in terms of pleasure out of everything. Should you even try to do that? Yeah, and what yeah. also what makes your existence matter yeah. more meaningful, you know yeah. what I mean? Immortality versus mortality. What's yeah. the point of being able to live for an eternity yeah. if you're not actually doing anything with yeah. it? All you're doing is you know, you're standing there, you're watching over people, you're kind of like living vicariously through other uh, other people. Do you want to live for forever or do you want to actually live a life that you can be proud of mm -hmm. where you're not questioning whether or not you're actually living fully or what if I did that? What if I did that? You know, mm -hmm. what's the point of living in an eternity of questioning? Yeah. You know, all of us, you know, in the world, we're kind of like, I don't want to die. It's jump to the end to die. I'm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you died at 
20 you know what i mean and yeah. like you were living your life you you loved you mm -hmm. experienced you saw the world you yeah. saw people you understood you know what i mean yeah. and then you die at 20 and people are out here oh my god you're, you're yeah. too young but in in the meantime you're like no i lived yeah i got yeah. 20 years those 20 years that i got yeah. you know what i mean yeah. instead yeah. of saying oh it's so sad they died so old but did nothing with their life got to experience nothing about life in the world and yet they were around for so long that's tragic exactly. but no one ever says that you live up until till 90 or 100 yeah. but you never really did anything yeah. and and you know like at the funeral are you kind of like feeling happy for the person do you feel happy for the person that they lived a long yeah. life yeah or are you happy for the person that they lived a meaningful life yeah i think the reason why they uh, fell in love with each other maggie and seth is because they both had an appreciation for ernest hemingway they <laughs> yeah, both loved that. that book that he wrote uh, what did hemingway call it a movable feast what did hemingway say he called it a movable feast what else did he say what <laughs> listen for Maggie, Seth is like it's like a child, you know, mm -hmm. because a kid is experiencing everything for the first time. Yeah. So, and for us, you 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 get to a point of kind of like, oh, okay, well, I've I've seen yeah. this, been there, done that, tree, yeah. okay, bark, branches, yeah, okay, what what's the big deal? Yeah. But then there's a child, yeah. And then they're like, what is that thing yeah. with the, the arms and yeah. all these things? What yeah. are the, the green hair? Yeah. And then you start thinking of a tree. You look, you start looking at a tree yeah. differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? This thing that you just walk past. Yeah. So things like when he's asking her how to describe the pear. What's it taste like? Describe it like Hemingway. Well, it tastes like um, <laughs> a pear. You don't know what a pear tastes like? I don't know what a pear tastes like to you. It's really interesting because when you eat a pear, you never really yeah. think of like, what does it taste like? Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you start thinking about it broadly. Yeah. You, the experiences in, you have in your life yeah. that someone else never yeah. doesn't have access to. Yeah. And even if they do have access to mm -hmm. you, there's so many things that become so regular to you, but initially were pleasurable. And then they just kind of lose that appeal yeah. to you. And yeah. which is a sad thing because at the end of the day, you know, they are still kind of beautiful things. So then yeah. you start thinking about like, when I'm eating, how does this taste? Yeah. Or when I'm touching someone, you know, you then you think about the hair mm -hmm. on your arm. Mm -hmm. and how does that feel? How would I describe that feeling? Yeah. It just kind of makes life much more sensual, much yeah. more interesting, and gives you more curiosity, which yeah. automatically spices yeah. life up, but also just kind of brings you out of the mundane. Exactly. You know, because life, yeah. when you once you get used to certain things, it, it makes your existence a bit seem much more mundane than yeah. it is. And at one point, Maggie describes Seth as beautiful because I think he has this yeah. ability to still be so present and to enjoy everything and to ex and to appreciate everything for as much as you can appreciate anything. Which is, because the, the other doctor that, you know, is into Maggie, he's kind of very much like, well, yeah, you lost a patient, but so what? I mean, it's your job. You gotta move on. He's very disconnected from, which happens, understandably. You kind of have to do that to be a functional surgeon because you're going to lose people, but he's kind of too realistic about life and the job. And that's what kind of disconnects him, I think, from being able to connect with Maggie. You know, I love the, the part that Seth talks about where he's like, why do we cry? Why do your tear ducts overact? Why? Why do they overact? I don't know. Maybe, maybe emotion becomes so intense, your body just can't contain it. Your mind and your feelings become too powerful. And your body weeps. All the cells, everything much, is yeah. too much, and then it has this reaction, which I think yeah. is really beautiful. That's some stuff we uh, thought about City of Angels. Yeah. What did you guys think? Yeah. Have you seen it? You know, let us know what you thought. In the comments down below, share your thoughts on our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then, until next time, peace. That's a wrap. Bye.